Hey, good morning, BBR. Brackleberry not... Ranch at Hummahalla. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. But that's not CCR. That's Creedence Clearwater Revival. Yeah. We're BBR, Brackleberry Ranch. Okay. So guys and gals and kids of all ages, a uh, big Saturday and Sunday here at the ranch for us. Yes. It's a big step in the progression of what we're trying to do down here. So normally we come down on Saturday morning, we leave our house up in East Phoenix, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, and get down here usually just a little bit before noon, mm -hmm. work the rest of the Saturday and then all day Sunday and head back home to work. This weekend, because of what's going on, we left last, last night, night on Friday night. Got down here about 11.30 last night, which was different. Yep. Uh, never come down here uh, pitch black before. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty cool seeing just different different uh, view from different time of the night and day. Um, and so the reason why is uh, we're having Anthony, his wife, and I believe their kids are coming um, in their travel trailer to get our solar installed. Yay! Anthony with Freedom Solar. You can find him on Facebook. Uh, they got wonderful reviews and uh, just seem to do a really great job. They were highly recommended back when we were on Facebook. <laughs> um, we're not on that because of the censorship and stuff. <laughs> so anyway, uh, back when we were, um, they had wonderful reviews and were actually highly recommended by uh, a couple people and the small private groups that we were at that do homesteading and off-grid stuff. And so typically, uh, from what I understand, and maybe he'll correct us when they get down here, but I, I'm pretty sure they just kind of work up in the northeast Arizona part of the state yeah. with all the off-gridders up there and homesteaders. And so they're making a special trip down here. Um, to this part of the state to, to help us out and so uh, we're really blessed and thankful for them so they're going to be here shortly um, and so it's going to be a two-day project I think the first day is getting um, panels installed before it gets too hot and then they're going to work on getting the electrical done and the inverter and the battery hooked up and stuff like that and, mm -hmm. um, get, and so we're not going to be able to use the power yet no. uh, we have Ken and his wife Terry who are going to be coming in subsequent weeks to help us get our electrical set up yeah. Um, but we're going to have at least the solar installed so it's ready to go. Yes. Um, so when that electrical gets done, then we can turn power on. And um, yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, we're also having Bobby come back out from Coyote Plumbing. Today? Uh, he's coming out today at 11 o'clock. He's doing our piping for the LPG uh, gas for our range and for our uh, on demand hot water heaters. And so he's already been out once to do some measurements. We had some slight changes on there, so he wants to just come back out and just be on the same page yeah. that we're on. So make sure his quote is accurate, and just we're all on the same page of what we need him to have done for us. Um, so big day, big day, big weekend. Um, so we've got a bunch of little stuff that we need to do, but we're pretty excited about our our plan for what we did here with the rock. Yes. Why are you excited? No dust on the front <laughs> porch. I think we mentioned in our last video episode, so whenever we come down, after we've gone down a week, especially if we've been going down two weeks with the vortex in this area, woo, yeah. it kicked up the dust, something terrible. And so we would come down, we'd know how bad and windy it was, but how much dust was on the front porch. Yes. <laughs> if it was that thick or that thick. Yeah. <laughs> and so, was there any dust this nope. when we got down last no night? No dust. No dust. No dust at all. So, uh, we think our plan works. So every once in a while, we're right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, learning by, uh, by mistake and by trial and error. Yes. So we have a bunch of little, um, oh, what, what did we hear last night? We were in bed. We heard something last night. Yes. We don't know what it was. No. It was something over in this area, but there was no remnants of what it was doing last night. So we don't know if it was javelina, if it was some pack rats, uh, a baby cow. Yeah. Or what, but it, it woke us up last night. Um, our motion detector lights didn't go off, which was so, odd. So yeah. uh, maybe it was just a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Something small, probably. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, we have a bunch of little stuff to do today. Um, you want to grab the camera? Yeah. Um, one of the things we brought down, we'll show you. We'll take a walk around the edge here. don't know how far we'll get on this this weekend, but something we brought down, I'm still unloading it from the truck, is we brought down a bunch of these cool uh, concrete stained red bricks. 
and we're going to use those. There's still some more in the back of the truck. I haven't unloaded them all yet. I think we got about 130 of them or so. And we're going to, um, at some point uh, in the near future, uh, clear out the composting toilet shed um, of all the stuff that's loose in there. And those are going to be for uh, a partial um, wow. privacy wall for us for our shower to keep the water in and have it drain out the back little chute that Mia made when we uh, poured the slab. So we're going to have it maybe like, you know, like waist high for me, something like that. Uh, it's going to come out like three feet from the wall and then kind of curve, uh, cut over to a 45 degree angle. And then we'll have an entrance to come in over here. And so I'm, I know it's kind of hard to imagine when I'm pointing at dirt, um, but you'll get the idea once we get in there. So anyway, we're going to use those and we think we'll put a little uh, water seal on that. So it'll protect the, the bricks uh, from, from the water, from the shower. Um, but anyway, that's one of our projects. Um, we also are going to, at some point, going to start installing fencing. For the dogs, uh, we're going to use Mia found some, and we'll put a link in, in this episode in the description. Um, she found a wonderful website for rattle proofing, uh, rattlesnake proofing. And so, what they found, they did some experiment tests with baby rattlesnakes to find out number one, what was the smallest opening that they can get through, uh, and then number two, what's the height that you need to have for that. that smaller gauge opening fence to keep them out. And it's for rattlesnakes for, only. Yes, for, for rattlesnakes only, which is what our, we're mainly concerned with here. So what they found is the half inch gap is the snake will go right through it, the baby rattlesnake. It didn't stop it at all, went right through. And you'll see that in the video if you watch it down below. Um, and so that they, what they found is a quarter inch worked best. Um, it, it stopped the baby rattlesnakes from, from entering the area or exiting the, the cage you had. And what they found for height is that 36 inches worked the best because with rattlesnakes here in the southwest where we are, um, the longest one you're usually going to find is about five feet long. In Texas, they make it up to six feet long, but we're not in Texas. Um, so five feet is uh, the longest we're typically going to find here. Most of them are going to be two to three feet long. And so what they said is you need uh, fencing that's high is, is twice uh, half the length of the snake. So if it's a four foot snake, then two foot. And they said then to put another six inches on top of that for a buffer. So we're going to go 36 inches. So that's going to mean that the snake can be uh, five feet long and then a six inch buffer at the top. Um, and so we're going to do that uh, all the way around and the, dog the, run the outside only. for the dog run only. Uh, then we're also going to maybe put that uh, on top of the chicken wire fence here. We'll see. Maybe. We'll maybe. See. I, uh, I think... Probably yeah. we'll we'll see. We're definitely going to put on the outside. Um, yeah, for, for, for coming sure. in here for the dog run. Yeah, and so that will uh, eliminate. So we'll put the links down below because they're very informative for other folks that are you know like off grid and having snake issues. I know I saw another uh, video from some other folks that are down over past, by Sierra Vista and McNeil. Um, that we were watching their solar install go uh, being put in uh, put into place, and in their video they showed a snake slithering across their property and it looked like it's probably a good four foot long snake so um, it's, it's some good information for you folks that are down in this area uh, for rattlesnake proofing your house home property so <coughs> what else it's um, gonna be a good day gonna be a good day <laughs> so we'll uh, hopefully we'll have um, Anthony and his and we'll, we'll, they said they'd be happy to let us uh, feature them on, on our, our uh, episodes today and tomorrow uh, we're going to break it up as we do now uh, from one day to the next on the weekends when we're down here. So it's two separate episodes. Uh, but hopefully they'll, in addition to just being filmed from a distance while they do their work, his wife helps him as his helper, it looks like. Um, uh, maybe they'll want to get on camera if they want to and say hi to you guys and kind of let you know what they do and um, where they'd be willing to come work uh, for you too. Um, they're very, very reasonable in and, and, uh, and their uh, pricing structure and we're just really blessed that we were referred to them. So God bless you guys. Hope you had a blessed week or two since the last episode. And uh, we'll let give you updates. Give you updates throughout the day. Throughout the day as we normally do. Take care. All right.
Hey guys, uh, so we got some chores to do while Anthony and Selena from Freedom Solar are up on the roof getting the panels installed. You saw some of those uh, initial uh, panels going up there on the works, so, uh, work up on the roof. So very excited about that. So what we're doing is we talked about we got these bricks and we're gonna start creating the foundation border for our shower stall. So. We've got this leveled out and lined out, so we're going to come out about three and a half feet this way to this brick in the corner of the cinder block, and then we're going to cut it over about a 45 degree angle, and it's going to taper down. It's not going to be straight out to the edge, it's going to taper down, so it'll be easy access for us to get in and out. And then on this edge right here, uh, I've got a little baby learning how to pee for boys <laughs> urinal. <laughs> So it's perfect size, and that's going to go right on the corner here on the edge, and we'll have some of that clear plastic tubing. We'll run it, once the wall is in place, we'll run it along this line, around the back, and into the black water diversion. Um, so that's our plan. We've got it lined out, we got it leveled out, and so we're going to mix some cement in the bucket over here um, so we don't use a whole lot that we can waste, and we're going to slap some cement, put some bricks down. Another first. Wish yes. us luck. <laughs> solar we just got done doing the install um, we've got a 5 kilowatt lithium iron phosphate battery here we've got a 3 kilowatt 48 volt grow watt inverter and up on the roof we've got 2.25 kilowatts worth of panels uh, coming down in three sets uh, so these guys should be able to run pretty much just about whatever they want to during the day a little conservative at night but uh, they do have the ability to expand to another battery if they need to um, yeah. Yeah, has plenty of power to watch TV all day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah, TV. look us up on Facebook if you uh, have any questions or if you need anything for off grid. We can do kits or we can do installs. Freedom Solar. Freedom Solar. Yeah. Solar. And you guys, if you guys are mainly up in Northeast Arizona, but you mainly Northeast Arizona, we will travel. We'll travel. Yeah. Okay. As long as the weather's like this, <laughs> <laughs> you ordered a nice day for this. Yeah. Yep. <laughs>
Okay. Awesome. Any questions? No, we're, we're, we're very thankful, guys. Uh, they're very, very helpful the whole time before we even uh, had you come down. Very accessible, answered every multitude of questions that we had uh, in text. So very accessible, very helpful, highly recommended. We're always here for anything in the future. We appreciate the business. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. snake we cut the head off with a flat edge shovel it was only about a foot long but you can still see maybe the little rattle is still because of nerves it's still shaking but that sucker's dead so we left him out here for other rattlesnakes so in case they decide they want to come visit Brackleberry Ranch they can see what's gonna happen to them that's their fate so anyway, that's why we're going to be putting up that quarter inch chicken wire fencing around these fence posts to keep those little baby guys out of Brackleberry Ranch. Perfect example. Oh, look at he's still, still moving. Did you see that? This is the nerves. That was a big jump of him, his body. There we go. Wow, pretty crazy. Still moves like that even after it's dead. That head is almost severed off crazy anyway that's why we're putting up the quarter inch fencing again we'll have links to that down below of what rattlesnake experts recommend for snakes this size because that guy could definitely get through a half inch mesh definitely get through a one inch chicken wire mesh